Hey, 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 happy Tuesday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com, of which I happen to be the Grand Uba. It's a brand new month. Cool beans. Yes, welcome aboard. It is Tuesday, September 3rd. This is episode 356 of The Daily Dope. Tonight, I am going to share a bit of a how to play and review Imhotep the Duel from Cosmos. This was one of their trio of big Gen Con releases. So I've already reviewed Roll for Adventure. And tonight I will take a look at the second of the releases. We've got Tribes on the Horizon, a review for that as well. So do want to point out if this is the first time you've tuned in to check out the show, this is a live stream very very casual i talk tabletop gaming news share some gaming reviews sometimes first looks sometimes we page through some rpg releases and review those as well it is not rocket surgery by any stretch of the imagination so just kick back relax and enjoy so i see the madman has arrived in chat already tonight so uh good to see you madman i know it's been a while since you popped in to visit as you can see, because this is a live stream, chat is available. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I prevent some of these stranger commenters. Uh, I kind of keep them at bay. But I do pay attention to chat. So if you'd like to say howdy, or maybe you've got a question, or then again, maybe there's something about Imhotep the Duel you'd like to ask or get a closer look at, by all means, please chime in and I will respond. Of course, if you like the video, please give it a quick thumbs up. If you check out some of the videos on the channel and you like them, please subscribe. And don't forget, ring that little bell, because not only will that notify you when a new video is uploaded, it will also tell you within about five minutes when the stream goes live. So, pretty cool, pretty sweet. Got a lot cooking tonight. So, and of course, do want to mention, tell a friend. In fact, tell two friends. Yes, and don't forget, it's not just the YouTube channel. TheGamingGang.com is out there with over 600 reviews, thousands of articles, and yes, September 1st marked the occasion that I have moved into year 10 of covering tabletop gaming, so uh, pretty amazing. Seems like it was yesterday. I was out living in Arizona. I was living in chandler no i'm sorry i take that back i was living in mesa and my best friend elliot miller over at voice of v.com and i were talking and uh he was telling me about some of these podcasts he listened to that were tabletop games and i listened to some of them and i thought yeah these are fine but i think we could do better and you know what why don't we have a website too because back then Nobody, I mean, there were websites, but all the websites were for were to basically host the podcast for people. Gaming Gang was the first website to have a podcast and actually do news and have written reviews and things like that. So pretty wild, pretty wild. I know most people don't realize that. They think, oh yeah, uh, I guess uh, this Jeff's just, you know, just hanging around, you know, doing his thing. Anyway, so uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. So uh, into year 10, did change the logo a little bit, did change the uh, font of, uh, of our name and stuff like that, and tweaked GamingGang.com just a little bit visually. Not much, didn't go crazy, but uh, I didn't reinvent the wheel. I just kind of made a few little changes. So got a lot cooking as I started to say. I've got some contests to talk about. I've got a live contest that uh, I will be giving away just a little bit later. Uh, where did I hide it? Where's it sitting? Ah, for crying out loud. 
I have been just running around all day long. So, and yes, hey, thank you, Madman, uh, for the congratulations for uh, year 10, 10 years doing this. Anyway, I'm going to do a live giveaway as well. Yes, that's right. I'm going to be giving away a copy of the Lonely Mountain Region Guide for Adventures in Middle Earth to somebody who's watching live tonight. That will be a little bit later in the show. I'm not going to hand it out just yet. I've got some other contests to talk about as well. First, I'm going to dive into some tabletop gaming news, though. Got a little bit, not a ton. Got a little bit of news. And, of course, if you are one of those folks out there who don't like the tabletop gaming news segment of the show, be sure to check the show notes below once the video has been rendered. There will be timestamps you can skip right on past. Let's jump right in, because Gray Fox Games has returned after the Empire to Kickstarter. It was just up there, I think, I want to say two weeks ago, maybe even less than two weeks ago. They made some changes to the Kickstarter, and it's already actually 100% funded. Funded uh, today was the first day. Boom, it's already funded. So, here's the dope. After the Empire is a tower defense and worker placement game for two to four players. And after the Empire, you'll be recruiting refugees, gathering resources, and fortifying your defenses in order to prepare for assault after assault of invaders seeking to sack your castle and take its riches. Designed by Evan Halbert and Ryan Mock from Portland Gamecraft, After the Empire plays in about 90 minutes. In the game, you'll be recruiting refugees, gathering resources, and fortifying those defenses. During each season's combat, a minimum of three invader cards are revealed, with a randomized number of troops and compass direction of attack. Only the wealthiest of castles will draw the attention of larger forces and their siege weapons. You must repair your city and recruit and arm your troops quickly to stand any chance. The game includes plastic castle pieces in both wood and stone varieties that players will assemble on their boards in front of them. There is a quick video that uh, it's uh, about two minutes long that uh, Gray Fox Games has put together, so why not take a quick The Age of Empires is over. From the ashes of once great civilizations comes the rise of feudalism. You are a noble, claiming domination over the lands and holdings that are your birthright. Your grand ambition to grow your fiefdom into a wealthy and prosperous nation is matched only by your rivals. Yet a more insidious threat grows just beyond your borders. Invaders are coming to destroy and steal what is rightfully yours. After the Empire is a worker placement and tower defense game for two to four people, where players build and attempt to defend their own castles and surrounding lands. As your wealth and reputation grows, so too does the threat you face. How then can you stand against a force that grows in number and strength with each passing season? Build, fortify, recruit, and defend against the invaders. Construct buildings to add value to your kingdom and gain access to new abilities. Welcome refugees into your walls and make use of their skills. But with each new addition, make sure to increase your defenses. Structures can be damaged or destroyed. People can be wounded or killed. Your duty is to protect all who serve you. Are you up to the task of fighting off those who seek your destruction? Can you be the light that ends the dark ages? This is your story. This is what comes after the Empire. After the Empire is for two to four players, ages 14 and up, and plays in around 90 minutes. You can reserve a copy of the game for an $85 pledge 
through September 26th, and expected delivery is May of next year. Gotta say it, that uh, I like the fact that Gray Fox Games kind of tweaked that video a little bit because I don't recall the original Kickstarter video giving us as much information about the actual gameplay or actually about the game itself. Uh, I seem to recall there's more kind of like artwork and stuff like that. It was kind of like, I don't really understand this game. So I think that's one of the reasons why they, even though it was on its way to funding originally, I think that's why they pulled it, kind of tweaked some things and uh, posted it back up. Dan for No Enemies here has arrived. Good to see you, Dan. Hope you had a great weekend. I enjoyed my uh, my three-day weekend. That is for sure. I will talk about that in just a little bit. So, moving right along. There's a, the, kind of a unique-looking game that is coming from Metago. Uh, I am not overly familiar with a lot of their games, but it is a post-apocalyptic game they'll be releasing at Essen. It'll be followed by a North American release, and I've got the dope on Paris New Eden. The dazzling boulevards and historical monuments of Paris have been enveloped by lush vegetation. The once bustling city hub has been hushed to stillness following an apocalyptic event, and your goal is to forge a new future. Equip your shelter, manage your resources, and rally a community of various survivors, all while making your way through the jungle cityscape. Paris New Eden features a clever dice drafting mechanism that allows you to recruit survivors. Over the span of one year, you will endeavor to build your shelter and overcome the array of obstacles that you encounter along the way. The dice allow you to recruit survivors of different types. Tinkerers, brawlers, healers, sages, farmers, jacks of all trade like me. Or even useless survivors. Yeah, I guess that's probably more like me. At the end of each season, your survivors allow you to bid to improve your shelter. These survivors are recruited in five key areas and central squares of the Paris that we know, each one with different abilities. The train station, which lets you grow your community faster. The restaurant, to collect food to feed your community. The tower, to choose the goals you can fulfill. The center, which gives you access to special equipment. And the bridge, to gain access to new missions. Players score points by recruiting survivors and feeding them, by fulfilling objectives from the tower, and by completing secret missions acquired at the bridge. At winter's end, the player who has accumulated the most victory points wins. The future of Paris is in your hands. Paris New Eden is for two to four players, ages 10 and up, plays around 45 minutes, and it will carry an MSRP of $59.99 when it arrives in Q4. This looks kind of kind of interesting. I like the art style. It's not exactly real cartoony, but it's also uh, not real gritty and grim. So um, even though it is a post-apocalyptic game, it seems to kind of be a little more cheerful. I guess hopeful. I don't know. Could be interesting. Could be very, very interesting. Kabuki Kid has arrived. Good to see you, Kabuki Kid. Thanks for joining us again in chat. All right, so let's jump into some RPG news because there is a new Call of Cthulhu adventure that's available in PDF. And I've got the dope on The Shadow Over Providence. August 25th, 1928, Providence, Rhode Island. The Milton Hotel cordially invites you to view the fantastical traveling exhibition, The Kingdom of Fire, Egypt's 18th Dynasty. All the way from the British Museum, London, England, come see these wonders of ancient Egypt, rare and priceless items from a long time ago. Learn about the history from Dr. Caitlin Bronson, must be um, Charles Bronson's grandmother, the exhibition's curator, who will be on hand to answer all of your questions. Marvel at the treasures of Tutankhamun and Hetzefet, along with the star of the exhibition, the mysterious an epic jar of Imhotep the Mad has nothing to do with Imhotep the Duel because it's uh, Ibn Hotep, I guess. I B N H O T E P the Mad. Tickets are limited and going fast, and you don't want to miss out on what promises to be the most talked about exhibition of the year. 
With an invitation like that, how could your investigators possibly refuse? Be they historians and scholars, or even those who ply the black market trade in illicit antiquities. This is a rare opportunity to learn the secrets of the distant past outside of a museum. And what possible danger could there be in going to see the mortal remains of someone called Ibhinotep the Mad? The Shadow Over Providence is a new Call of Cthulhu scenario set in a venture that may seem strangely familiar to anyone who has visited Providence's iconic Biltmore Hotel. It's interesting, because I worked at the Biltmore Hotel in Phoenix, Arizona. Yes, that's right. I was a bartender there for a few years. The adventure was written by John Hook of the Miskatonic University podcast and developed and published by Chaosium to celebrate Necronomicon 2019. You can snag the 36-page adventure from Drive-Thru RPG for, wait for it, $3.99. Hey, pretty cool. I gotta say, four bucks for a Call of Cthulhu adventure that's from Chaosium? Can't go wrong. That is a pretty sweet deal. Pretty cool. I will definitely check this out because it's a new Call of Cthulhu adventure. How can I say no? KC Board Gamers in, is in the house. Good to see you, KC. Thanks for stopping up by. We got a good chat starting up. And then my final news piece is from Cubicle 7 because the 12th Doctor source book is now available for the Doctor Who role-playing game. And I've got the dope. This source book explores the 12th Doctor's adventures on Earth and beyond. With detailed information on all the allies, enemies, aliens, and gadgets they encounter, as well as examining each adventure, the book contains a wealth of material for the Doctor Who role-playing game. It is also a fact-packed resource for fans of the show. Gifted a new series of regenerations after rescuing the homeworld they once thought they doomed, the Doctor barreled back into action. With a new lease of life and not a second to waste, the Doctor returned ready to save the universe, whether it wanted it or not. Duel with Robin Hood, Journey to the Center of a Dalek, of Fox Deadly Two-Dimensional Killers, meet the Master's capricious new incarnation, and tell all of them to shut up. Just one question, do you happen to know how to fly this thing? The 160-page PDF is available right now for $19.99 from drive through RPG. Love it, love it, love it! I say it all the time. Cubicle 7 has done just a phenomenal job with their Doctor Who source books. They are fantastic. And you don't have to be interested in the role-playing game at all to really get into it. I love... Um, like the first Doctor, second Doctor, where there's episodes that don't exist anymore because the BBC erased the tapes. Damn you, BBC cheapness! Anyway, um, so it's like, it's really cool because you get a synopsis. If you are into the role-playing game, there's all these like if, uh, little tidbits and kind of nuggets for, do you want to like, continue the adventure you don't want to continue that story in the role-playing game from the episode or how do you tweak the episode very very cool really really loved it so Fleming Huron says well at least it isn't the current doctor ha 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 I don't know I don't have a problem with the new doctor didn't bother me at all um the problems I had with the new season which aren't many but uh they have absolutely nothing to do with with the doctor being a woman or uh, the actress portraying the doctor either. But um, anywho, so that's very cool. I was very happy to see that. And I will definitely, I highly doubt we're going to see the physical edition of the uh, doctor source book. Because for one, it's not out yet. It's uh, usually it's a few months. When Cubicle 7 releases something in PDF, it's usually a few months before we'll see it. Uh, if, you know, the physical edition hit. So, anyway, one other news piece I wanted to add. I didn't put together a sell sheet info or anything like that, but I did want to mention the Dungeons & Dragons Essentials Kit is now available everywhere. This is no longer 
a Target exclusive. And if you caught my review, this is excellent. If you have any interest whatsoever in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, really good, really good. Yes, Fleming Heron says, my main problem is the storylines. No issue with a female doctor in the least. I'm right with you. Uh, I thought half the stories were interesting and some of them were just like, eh, yeah, yeah, nothing too exciting. So anyway, so yeah, definitely. Uh, this is available uh, off the top of my head. I'm trying to remember. I think this is 1999 or is it 24.99? I think it's 1999 and it is jam packed with goodness. I was really surprised at how much, uh, how many goodies they packed inside this box. All right. So anyway, so that is it for the tabletop gaming news. Got a few things I want to take care of before we jump into Imhotep. So as I mentioned before, I am going to be giving away a copy of the Lonely Mountain Legion Guide for Adventures in Middle Earth on this episode tonight to somebody watching live. As long as you live in the U.S. and or Canada, so, uh, but I have other contests that are currently going on too. In fact, getting very close to wrapping up the August giveaway for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, which is in PDF. It's a copy of the core rule book, the bestiary. Although, you know, it's funny. I was just listening to a podcast last night, a uh, role-playing game podcast. And once again, they were calling it a bestiary. So I guess it's either or. And also included with this is the standalone adventure, The Fall of Plague Stone, all in PDF. This is a contest, doesn't matter where you live, because it is a digital giveaway. But I am giving away one copy for every uh, 65 subscribers beyond 1,600. We are about 50 away from the second one. And the contest only runs until the fifth because I will be announcing the winner on the 6th. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't see us getting to the second giveaway. It stinks. I would have really liked to have done that. But uh, anyway, there's that. Then also have the Everdell contest, which is for Twitter followers. And uh, this one, you actually have to do a little bit of work, not much. But every day I tweet uh, a tweet basically talking about Everdell and this contest all you've got to do is retweet that tweet with a comment about why you really like Everdell and get in the running for the wooden ever tree for Everdell as well as the Pearl Brook expansion for Everdell and this is the collector's edition this contest is running until the 8th of September Got to get 5,100 followers. And right now I am about, I think, like 85-ish away. Going to be close. Going to be close. Now, this one you do have to live either in the U.S. or Canada to get into the running. So those are the contests going on. As I mentioned already, a little later on, I am going to uh, pick a winner for the Adventures in Middle-Earth Lonely Mountain Region Guide. But what is going on? Oh, so here goes Dan. Dan's already at it. He's like, got my address? Got my address, Jeff? I don't know, Dan. I don't know. I know you live in Canada. I know that much. So anyway, um, what's coming up on the show? So what's coming up this week and into next? And then I've got something that, um, hmm, interesting enough. I will mention so tomorrow's war game wednesday so i will be unboxing and taking a first look at death valley battles for the shenandoah from gmt games from my pals over at gmt this is a pretty hefty box it's got quite a few american civil war battles in this as well so we'll be taking a look at that now on thursday originally my plan was for us to kick back and take a look through Rough Nights and Hard Days from Games Workshop and Cubicle 7 Entertainment because Thursdays I love doing RPGs but I got something in the mail today oh yes I did 
from Wizards of the Coast. That's right. I got... Uh, let me get it out here. Baldur's Gate. Descent into Avernus. So, uh, I am double-checking with my PR contact. I am pretty sure there is no embargo on this. Even though this does not arrive in stores until September 19th, I believe I can cover this. So, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to replace, taking a look at, uh, yeah, the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay book with Descent into Avernus, and then I will shoot a standalone video where we will take a look at uh, Rough Nights and Hard Days. So, I also have the, uh, the exclusive alternate cover. I also received some stickers. So I thought that was cool. Got some stickers. I got the expansion to Dundon May... Dundon? Dundon? Dungeon Mayhem Battle for Baldur's Gate or Battle of? Oh no, it's Battle for Baldur's Gate. So I got, got the expansion. Plus, I also got the dice and miscellany kit. So I thought that was very cool because usually Wizards of the Coast just sends me the books, even when there's some you know little little additions. So I thought that was very, very cool. And this actually has like a uh a box that uh, doubles as a dice tray. So that is what we will be looking at on Thursday. So I'm pretty excited by it to check out because it's a new it's a new adventure for Dungeons and Dragons. And, I, and you know, I think the rest of the year, all we've got is that um, what collector's edition of um, Horde of the Dragon Queen and Rise of Tiamat. So, Tyranny of Dragons, which they're going to collect it into one book. I think that's it. I think that's all we're going to have as far as... Oh, and then we got the uh, Eberron book. But as far as adventures go, I believe this will be the last one for 2019. So, pretty cool. We'll dive into that. Friday, I will be sharing how to play and reviewing Valparaiso from Stronghold Games. Man, moving right around. On Monday, oy, this is heavy. I will be sharing a how to play in reviewing Champions of Hera from Greenbrier Games. Next week will probably be pretty heavy on the reviews. Because on Tuesday, I will be reviewing Tribes. Yes, the final of the three, the trilogy of Cosmos releases from Gen Con. That will be on the agenda. And then a week from tomorrow, I think we'll do a double dip. I think we will actually take a look at Donetsk Battle for the Airport, as well as Okinawa. Both are from Tiny Battle Publishing. These just showed up. So Fleming Huron says it's a month of jam-packed goodness for RPGs, apparently. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Uh, Funny enough, I didn't have a whole lot of news today because it was kind of quiet from the holiday weekend. So, all right, so let me get uh, everything put, kind of put back. There we go. So, all right, anyway, so Dan's loving Tiny Battle Publishing with our friend Mark H. Walker. So before I jump on into my how to play and review for Imhotep the Duel, let me point out once again that the gaming gang, thus the Daily Dope, pretty much not for profit endeavors. So if you like the website, if you like the show, if you like the channel, please consider making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Lil Bub's Big Fund does supply grant monies to organizations around the country that provide care for special needs animals who are awaiting adoption. These pets could be, you know, a little bit older. They might have mobility issues. They might be blind or deaf, require special medication. Regardless, these pets do deserve to find loving homes and as somebody who has I actually adopted many a shelter pet in my day. I can tell you from my knowledge that these animals will repay your love 
100 times. So, like I said, if you dig what I do, eh, consider making a small donation. And if you do, by all means, please shoot me an email. The email address is right down there in the corner. Jeff McAleer at TheGamingGang.com If you'd like, I'd be happy to give you a shout-out on the following show. So, all right. So, uh, KC Board Gamers is mentioning we had a missionary come through that used to use <laughs> Donetsk Airport. Yikes. Well, you know, back in the day, I'm sure it was fine. But, uh, yeah. Pretty crazy. All right. So... I'm sure people are tuning in because they want to check out the how to play and review of Imhotep the Duel from Cosmos. It's designed by Phil Walker Harding with artwork provided by McGill Coimbra, Michaela Conley, and Klaus Stefan. The game is for two players, ages 10 and up, plays in around 30 minutes, does carry an MSRP of $19.95. I have actually seen it online for as low as uh, about $14. And uh, at $14, it is a steal. So let me grab a quick sip. We will move over to the other camera. Because I've got everything set up here. And I will also toss on yield reading specs. So, um, so Imhotep, uh, the original Imhotep is for two to four players. So Imhotep the Duel is kind of picking up on the theme of the original game, although it's not necessarily the game revamped into a two-player system, which is fine, which is okay. So as you can see, it's a pretty small footprint game. Pretty easy to bring with you anywhere you're going. I like the insert. I think the insert's pretty cool. Oh, look, one of the tiles is down there. <laughs> so uh, I thought it was kind of cool, the artwork and stuff like that. So, the rules are very short. Show off the rules here. And very succinct and to the point. Pretty clear as far as what's going on in the rules. So, all together, we're looking at six pages of rules. And, of course, there's a little rule book. And there are images throughout. So, essentially, what uh, you're going to be doing is... Each of the players, uh, one represents uh, Nefertiti and the other is Akhenaten. And they are both looking to build their monuments to uh, to, to pretty much have a uh, much more fancy and flashy city than their opponent. So to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to be unloading resources from these ships that come in to dock. So this is the, this is the dock area here. And you'll see each of these ships will have three counters on them, three resources. So we have different sorts of resources here, and I'll go through a bit of them. I'm going to kind of tour around this a little bit. So we've got the six ships. We've got our resource piles or counters, tokens, whatever you want to consider them. And these are placed face down and mixed up. You're going to start off the game by putting the ships here in the the moorings and you're going to randomly fill each of these ships with the three different counters so different resources here then we also get a reserve here with three over there as well so each of the players is going to have four meeples and on each turn they can do one of three things all right dan's got to rock on out good to see you again dan i will catch you later uh, i'm sure you'll pop in for war game wednesday tomorrow so that'd be cool have a good one so anyway each of the players is going to get four meeples so we've got white and black each of the players will also get a little obelisk tile that they're going to stack up their obelisk resources we've got two pyramids we also have a temple. And then we also have a tomb over here. Now, one of the things that uh, I noticed Cosmos has been doing with their games is they've been creating A and B sides. So they've got these. I'm going to push this up a little bit so I've got some space here. So they, they're kind of creating some variants 
And they've done this with tribes. They've done this. Actually, I pushed that a little too far up. They've done this with tribes. They've done this with Roll for Adventure. And they've done this with Imhotep the Duel. So on the A side, you are scoring a certain way for the different monuments that you're trying to build. And then you flip it over. We've got a B side with different scoring. It's a different kind of scoring breakdown. So I thought that was kind of interesting because it gives you some some new wrinkles to the game. So it's you're not always playing the same exact game. And you can either go with all B sides or you can kind of mix and match. So you might say, OK, well, let's do the B side with the pyramids. Uh, we'll do A for the tombs, B for the temple, A for the obelisk, whatever you want to do. So it provides a little more um, juice for the uh, replayability. Because one thing I will point out, uh, I enjoy I enjoyed this. I thought this is a pretty good two player game. One of the one of the aspects of the game that kind of left me a little cold, I guess we'll say, is um, I don't know how much replayability it's got. So uh, I mean, it's fun, but it's not a game where I could see I'm going to be taking. I'd be like two player game. Oh yeah, I got to be taking Imhotep the Duel off the shelf uh that said it's a good game i like it and i will kind of talk a little bit more about it as uh, as we dive in so anyway so we've got the ships all set up so everything's set up so you've got your four meeples here and as i started to say you've got the ability to do one of three things on your turn you can place a meeple i guess i'll lay it down like this make it a little easier to see. So we can place a meeple, we can unload a ship, or we can use one of these tiles. Now these blue tiles have like special abilities. And I, yeah, zooming in won't, uh, won't do us any good. Um, I will point out that uh, the writing on the tiles is a little small. So of course, uh, some people might have a little bit of a problem with it. Personally, I, I, amazingly enough, I could read it okay without my reading glasses. So, but um, this is kind of a small footprint game. So keep that in mind. So, uh, but I got to say for a $20 game, there's a lot in the box. There's a lot going on too. Okay, so you can place a worker. You can unload a ship or you can play one of the blue tiles that will have an action on it. So for an example, we've got take one token. This also says take a token. It says place one meeple and unload one or two. Uh, let's see, we got grab some other ones over here. So regardless, it's uh, it's basically giving you an action that you can utilize. There's one uh, swap two tokens and unload. So you can swap two of the tokens, two of the resources on the ships so as far as the resources themselves we've got these pieces of obelisk that uh as we gain those we put them and we build the obelisk so we're looking to see who has the tallest obelisk we also have the pyramids we've got two different kinds of pyramid tiles so we've got this lighter brown and then we've got this darker brown because we've got the two pyramids here and we would actually build them three across, two across, one across. So we're going to actually build up a little pyramid as we gain those. Then we have the tomb. So these are all numbered from 1 to 12. So we've got 12 different tiles. So if you were to get this, you would actually place the nine right there. And uh, we've got different ways of scoring. So every group connected gets us points. So we're trying to connect the different different points across the numbers across now the b side is we actually have groups so we don't want everything in a line we want some separation there with the groups so that's the tomb and then these little tokens here with a little like almost like little suns on them those are temple pieces and we gain one point for each of the circles on the tile. So effectively, this would be four points. 
this is three that's one so on and so forth and then of course we've got we also have the action tokens so what will happen is you're going to line up your workers so as an example let's say i place my worker here say i start off it's my turn my action is i place my my worker here so what i'm basically looking to try to do then is unload either this ship or this ship because we have a line right so we've got the lines here it's a grid so we've got across this way and we've got down or up whatever you want to consider up and down here now as far as where i would unload the ship so if i'm closest to the ship like here right so if i'm closest i take the far tile if i were here i would take the middle tile if i were here i would take the closest tile so that's something it's important to keep in mind hey viper dave is popping in good to see you viper dave thanks for us uh, for swinging in uh anyway so that indicates where you can take the cargo from the ships now you also have to make sure that you you have at least two workers in the row to begin unloading a ship so for an example we've got my myself as the first player let's say the white player they're next they say okay well i'm gonna go here and then i say all right well then i'm gonna go here well now the white player could say okay well i'm gonna unload this ship even though they don't have workers here they can still unload this ship because there are two workers so effectively what would happen is okay we're un i'm gonna unload this ship the white player says i'm unloading that ship so the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna take the token here and token there so and then what happens is they'll actually remove my workers so what you want to do at whoops got them in the wrong order is you want to be careful how you place your workers because you're trying to one-up each other while you're also trying to make sure that you get the resources that you're trying to get right so maybe you're looking for okay well i'm 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 building this pyramid i need one of these so you're trying to go okay well i'm putting my guy here you're you're basically running the risk of if you have two of your workers in a row the other player can say okay well i'm on un i'm unloading that ship so it's a uh, it's a little like a chess match to, to almost a little like yeah as weird as it sounds a little tic-tac-toe-ish because you're trying to make sure that uh that you kind of stay on top of it so for an example let's say the white player went first and let's say we're something like this then i could say okay well um what are we going to do here i'm going to go here and then you have three in a row we could unload all of this when the white player takes their turn um now as far as unloading the ships when you go to unload a ship you're going to unload the entire ship even if there's only two even if there's only two workers you're going to unload the ship and whatever cargo is left over is just returned to the box so it's just cargo that was not unloaded to the two players so you're not going to have a bunch of these sitting like you know sitting around like this making the game drag on so once a ship gets unloaded everything gets unloaded regardless if you took all of these tokens or not once that's done you're going to reload the ship you're just going to randomly place these in here and then flip them on over see what you've got here we go so that would be the next cargo for the ship so you're going to continue doing this and as you're playing you're going to be getting all your different here we go here's an action place two or three meeples 
<laughs> That's a pretty damn good action. So you're going to uh, be gaining these various different tokens. Oh, there we go. Until there are no longer any ships. Well, I take that back. Until there's only one ship left. <clears throat> so what eventually you'll end up doing is you will fill up all the ships and all of these will be gone, right? Everybody's already got it. So one aspect of the game too is it doesn't matter if you can't use something. Take it anyway. Because uh, there's no penalty. There's no penalty for you. Take, like if you finished your, your pyramid, if you finish this pyramid up, you can still take this to keep it out of the other player's hands. There's no penalty for you taking something that you can't necessarily use. Um, so anyway, so once all of these tokens have been pretty much taken from the by the two different players, oops, let's move this a little bit, uh, and you're building your different monuments here, eventually you're going to come down to Emptying a ship, there's no more tokens left, and this ship is out of play. That's gone. Ship's gone. Once again, let's say we emptied that off. That's gone. You're going to continue playing until there's only one ship left, and then that's going to mark the end of the game. You are not going to unload the final ship that's in the harbor, that's moored in the harbor. Once you've done that, once you trigger the end game, then it's all about scoring. So for the obelisk... For the A side, it's you get one point for every piece of the op obelisk that you've got, and whoever's got the highest obelisk will get an additional six points. Then we score the pyramids. It's gonna tell you, okay, so we score both pyramids on the A side. It's gonna say number number of tokens. If you got all six, it's worth 21 points. So if you've got both pyramids built, it's 21 points. And we got the tomb. It's going to tell you how many tokens you've got that are connected and how many you score. And then, of course, for the temple, as I mentioned, for each of the symbols on the temple tokens, you'll get a point. The B side for the pyramid is interesting because it's only the smaller of the two pyramids is scored. But you can actually keep building bigger areas of the pyramid. On the obelisk, we have the first to get five, it's 12 points. So it's actually, you're racing to build this. It's not necessarily who builds the highest one. On the B side for the temple, you're looking at creating sets as opposed to just counting up symbols. So you get points for the sets. And then for the tomb, as I mentioned before, you're looking at grouping, you're trying to group these together to get four points. So you're looking to put together groups, but you want to have separation between those groups. You're not trying to put these in a line like you are on the A side. Definitely like uh, the fact that it, we've got these A and B sides to give a little more variety to the game. Um, I don't, I can't say that the A and B side, like the B side makes it more difficult. It's just, you're going to take a different approach. That's all. That's all you're basically going to do. So, Pretty much, that is, in a nutshell, Imhotep the Duel from Cosmos. So, what do I think of the game? Uh, as I pointed out, uh, I like it. As I, as I was mentioning in the review when I started kind of showing you how to play, uh, I like the game. It, it just doesn't blow me away. Uh, you know, it's, it's not, like, super puzzly like some Euro games, which is fine. Um, there's... A little bit of luck, not a ton of luck. It's just, you know, what do you draw to fill up the uh, the ships and that? Uh, it can it can it can be kind of cutthroat a little bit, which I like because you can you can sit there and try to throw wrenches into your other players' plans. You can kind of get an idea what they're trying to score, so you can kind of try to block that or take things away from them. Uh, I find it interesting how you have to uh, have two of the workers to at least empty the ship uh although you can have um you can have points where you'll have three workers in a row 
because somebody wants to unload every one of those off the ship. Game moves pretty quickly. It takes about half hour to play. Uh, we played it a few times. Uh, all in all, I, I want to say I think we played it four times. We played three times with the A side and we played one side with the B side. Like I said, it's fun. I liked it. Uh, it's, you know, it's just, it's not revolutionary. Uh, I, I think it's a good two player game. And I think it's, uh, it's a nice, like, wind up the game, night of gaming, wind down a night of gaming. Maybe like while you're waiting for, for other gamers to get over to the house or, or maybe everybody else is left and it's just you and a friend or you and a spouse, whatever. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, all in all, on a scale of 1 to 10, I give Imhotep the Duel a 7.2 out of 10. So it, uh, it's worth a purchase. If you keep in mind that, uh, you know, it's, it's not going to like rock your world, but, uh, it is a fun, fun game, especially at the price point. I mean, $20 game, it's a, it's a nice $20 game. If you can get it for less than that from an online retailer, uh, it becomes a pretty good deal. It becomes a pretty good deal. All right, so that is it for my how to play as well as my review of Imhotep the Duel. So, who do we got in chat who wants to get in the running for Adventures in Middle Earth, the Lonely Mountain Region Guide? Uh, chime in. I'll give you guys a couple of moments to uh, to jump in there. Uh, so if, uh, if you, uh, if you're interested in getting in the running, chime in in chat. And once again, as I mentioned, you gotta live in the U.S. or Canada. And I'm going to get a die out. And, uh, so, uh, Fleming Heron says, that's how I like, uh, this sort of game, this killer game. When you have a spare moment. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, Imhotep the Duel probably isn't a game that we're, you're sitting there and you're like, oh, wow, you know, let's plan this. Like, oh, yeah, that Saturday we're going to play Imhotep the Duel. You know. So Mad Men says they're passing. They already have a copy. Fleming Heron's not in the U.S. So we still have uh, Casey Board Gamers, Viper Dave. I know uh, Dan's already called it a night. Anyone else floating around in chat? do 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 I mean, if, if nobody wants to chime in to get a copy, it's okay. I mean, I, I don't have to give it away. I'll save save on the shipping. Just kind of weird that, uh, like, yeah, nobody wants it. So it's like, they, well, of course, the Madman says they already got a copy. And the Flaming, and Flaming Huron's not. Okay, so we got KC Board Gamers. Viper Dave, you hanging around? You want to be in on this? Or uh, or what's the, uh, what's the deal, yo? Cause I'll I'll put some of this stuff away real quick. Cause it looks like uh So Casey says they're having some connection issues. Well, we are looking like everything is rocking pretty good here. We have no drop frames. So uh Alright, well, it looks like Casey Board Gamers is going to be our winner. Put this stuff away here real quick. Looks like they're going to be our winners. So what I, I'll need you to do, Casey, is I need you to um, shoot me a message. Shoot me an email to jeffmacklear at thegaminggang.com. And uh, I think you can also message me on YouTube. So I uh, just need your, your address, and I will get that out. So congratulations to KC Board Gamers. And uh, they have won the copy that nobody seemed to want <laughs> of Adventures in Middle Earth Lonely Mountain Region Guide. Yes, this has been out for a little bit, so I can see that. So that's it for tonight's show. On tomorrow's show, it's War Game Wednesday, so I will be unboxing and taking a first look at Death Valley Battles for the Shenandoah from GMT Games. So, as I like to point out, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, by all means, please visit GamingGang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. By now you know the drill. Get your geek on at GamingGang.com. So, uh, also, 
Don't forget, if you like the video, give it a quick thumbs up. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Don't forget, ring that bell because it will notify you not only when new videos get uploaded, but also it'll tell you when the stream goes live. So, Tuesday show, new month, year 10 of the Gaming Gang. Pretty sweet. So I will be back tomorrow. Everybody who joined me in chat, thank you very much for keeping me company tonight. I know some folks are watching live. They didn't jump into chat. Hey, come on, jump in. We don't bite. Next time you pop in, say hi. Anyway, I will be back tomorrow and everybody have a great night. And of course, happy trails. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you like this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again... Thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.